Bet on Black is back in Atlanta for season three and ready to change lives. As you know, we partnered with Target and searched all over the country for extraordinary black entrepreneurs looking to lock in and level up. Last week, one business founder earned their place in the finals. Tonight, three more contestants will try to convince our judges that they should advance and get a chance to win the $200,000 grand prize. I'm Dustin Ross, and last time on Bet on Black, the first group of our entrepreneurs presented to our judges. Now, the competition was tight. Brooklyn T, however, wowed the judges with love and advanced to the finals. Tonight, the randomizer selected, fourth phase, third eye view, and Tubby's taste to pitch. Now, remember, thousands of dollars are at stake, and the judges make the calls. Now, everyone's gonna go home with a prize, but only one will advance to the finals with a chance at $200,000. We shoot our shot, we wager it all, and that's right, we bet on black. Reintroducing our incredible judges, we have podcaster and media personality Van Lathan. What's up, Van? Doing, What's going on? We have senior divisional merchandising of Target, Melanie Gatewood Hall. How you doing, Melanie? I'm good, I'm good. Hey, Dustin. Good, good. Now, we also have the mogul, the empress behind Slutty Vegan Restaurants and one of Time Magazine's top 100 people of the year, Pinky Cole, plus one. What's going on, Hello. Pinky? Hello. Good. Plus one. <laughs> and last but definitely not least, we have author, restaurateur, and hip-hop legend, Bun B. What's happening, Bun B? You already know. We're ready right. to get to it. That's right. <laughs> now, you guys should be warmed up now. You didn't preheated the oven. It's yes. episode two, That's right? right. <laughs> ready to rock and roll, right? How does it feel to be making such big decisions for these entrepreneurs today? I feel good. I'm excited. Yeah. It's hard, um, but doing this kind of work is not easy, but it's rewarding and intentional. And I think that every single contestant gets to walk away with some really good advice from these experts. And some really good money. And okay. some really good money. And with yes. that being said, <laughs> let's get it on, you guys. Before the judges hear the pitches, however, the contestants got some knowledge from Unique Jones Gibson, CEO and Chief Creative Officer at Culture Brands and the Happy Hughes Company. Listen in. 10 years ago, I started something called the Because of Them We Can campaign, which evolved into a platform which allowed me to create culturally relevant campaigns and products, not only for other companies, but also for myself, including a game by the name of Culture Tags. I launched Culture Tags at the beginning of 2020. We know that 2020 brought us the pandemic. It launched right before the pandemic and really took off. So super excited to be here with you, to talk to you and to learn more about your business, but also to share more about mine. Just thinking about how you were scaling into retail, how did you go about kind of forecasting what would be needed? I was very intentional in the beginning, knowing that was my goal. Right. And really just being forward and saying, I want to be on retail shelves and saying it when I was, I would do lives with people and I would say, you know, this game's going to be in Target. Hadn't talked to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> at the bullseye, but I was like, it's gonna be a target. I said no about Happy Hughes. Like, yeah. just speaking those things and not trying to say you just manifest everything with your words, but really matching my words with my output to ensure that I could get the outcome that I wanted. And so that's really how I went about it. It's gonna be easy, right? It's gonna be smooth sailing. Well, you look snatched. Well, thank that's you. That's half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to convince them that your business is snatched. Snatch. Yes. Okay? Yes. Ladies, make your way through the tunnel and give the judges all you got. Thank Woo, you so okay? much. Okay, y'all got this? Thank you, baby. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, baby, let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. Hi, y'all. Hey, ladies. Hello. How's it going? Hello. Hello. Welcome. Woo. Take a breath. <laughs> Take two. Take two. Yeah. Been back. Hello, I am Nana Ison Akiwowo. And I'm Marcia Cole. And we're the co-founders of Fourth Phase, a social impact maternal wellness brand that helps new mothers to heal, feel, and be heard during the fourth trimester. Take a look at our clip. Hi, I'm Nana Aysen Akiwowo. I'm co-founder of Fourth Phase. And I'm Marcia Cole, and I'm the co-founder of Fourth Phase, and we're located in Inglewood Cliffs, New Jersey. Fourth Phase is a femtech maternal wellness brand that helps new mothers to heal, feel, and be heard. I gave birth to my daughter and had come to almost dying at yeah. one point. Everyone asked moms, how's the baby? 
and no one asks her, how are you doing? It's not just after she has the baby, then it's just, you know, she's gonna bounce back like that. Our luxury gift boxes provides products in perineal and pelvic care, um, lactation support for um, milk production, um, belly and body pampering, and mind and body and mental well-being. For every box that someone purchases, a, a product is given to a woman in sub-Saharan Africa, as well as products are given to women who have just delivered babies here in the U.S. We've impacted over 1,500 moms. We have opportunities that have come our way to enter into retail marketplaces. We need to be able to move from us making things manually yeah. to scale up and, and as we grow. We want to see an aisle that's devoted to the fourth trimester. Woo! That's a lot, right? So, you know, last year alone, there were four million live births in the U.S. alone. And for new mothers, whether it's your first or your fifth child, you will go through the same physical and mental traumas which is, happens in the fourth trimester. And the fourth trimester for the dads, that persons that may not know, and dads, everyone, the fourth trimester is the recovery period directly after delivery. And oftentimes, that lasts up to seven years. Mm. It's a big deal. <laughs> I gave birth to my daughter and had no preparation whatsoever for the, just the emotional component of the fourth trimester. When I talked to all my friends, they gave me the Instagram of motherhood, which is, oh my God, I just love the baby, it's so amazing. <laughs> and they just forgot to tell me about what I was gonna go through. And I felt really ill-prepared. And in fact, a week after delivering my baby during my naming ceremony, I actually had to be rushed to the hospital due to extreme postpartum hemorrhaging and nearly died. Now, thankfully, I survived clearly, and I'm happy and thriving as a mother, but I also, as a mother, suppressed a lot of that energy in and never talked about it myself. So we came together during the pandemic to bring <laughs> this concept to life. What we did was then speak to, ha speak to doulas, midwives, moms, and OBGYNs. To we did people. focus groups and surveys with them to have them answer the central question of, what would you have wanted and needed during your fourth trimester? The answer became the fourth phase box. We create and sell luxury afterbirth gift boxes with 11 products that are mom-tested, organic, phallic-free, non-toxic, and sustainably sourced. So judges, today is the time, and now we ask you to join us to help mothers globally. Heal, feel, and be heard. I wanna know specifically First of all, exactly what's in the box? Inside of the boxes, there are 11 products that cover these six categories. That is pelvic, perineal, lactation, belly, body, and... Mental well-being. Mental well-being. And so the boxes are really tied into various products. Every product in here is intentional, and it creates, it is a box that is services both body and mind. You have a lot of really good products in here that are different SKUs mm -hmm. that can be in a target rather than just being a box. Absolutely. Is there a reason why you focus more on the box than taking these SKUs and going to say, well, you're here now, but yeah. I'm saying prior to this, going to say a target to say, hey, I got three really good products that I want to put on the shelf. We now offer all of the products individually on our platform. Got it. Because when a mom receives yeah. it, after you've received it as a gift and you now decide, oh my God, I've ran out of the cocoa nip from my nipples, I want to buy it and again. You can, order more. you can go back to the website and buy just the cocoa nip or create your own little bundle based off of what it is you need from the box. That's, okay. that's what I was going to ask. Could you big, personalize it? Another reason for the box is that it, it's curated. And so oftentimes a new mother doesn't even know what she needs. What you all have here fundamentally is something that is incredibly important and offers a level of access and ease to so many people who are clueless. Clueless. Right. Whether it's the fellas, whether it's those who just haven't done it yet. Like, th this is a wonderful concept because it offers something that is a fix to a problem that most people know exists, but don't know how to solve. So that fundamentally is wonderful. What I'm, what I'm trying to wrap my mind around as I look at this box full of stuff, what is the worth of this box? Like, and then what are the separate retails of all of these items? Okay, so that box, the Every Birth box, retails at $190. Oh, Ooh, wow. wow. 
Well, you know what? Don't say, oh, wow, because <laughs> market shows that the average person will spend upwards of $300, especially a new mom. Here is $190 worth of products that she's definitely going to need. Okay. So for us, that value in terms of what we looked at the market, in terms of what else was on the market, we knew that we had priced it right so in. So you have a target audience oh, We have this. a target audience, yes. Got it. And so I think in terms of the value that people see and definitely being comparable to what is actually out there, if you were combining all of these products individually, it would actually cost $350 to do it. I have a question. So I've recently understood the problem with black maternal mortality in the mm -hmm. country, and I had no idea that the aftercare was as much of an issue as what some sisters were going through right. while they were pregnant. It's a huge deal. So there's definitely a marketplace for the product. I'm interested in the science behind some of the stuff that you have in the box, because the population that we're talking about are like our most vulnerable women who mm -hmm. really, really need this care. You talked a little bit about how you guys came to this and all the people that you've talked to. Specifically though, these products, they work and you guys know how. Yes. How do you know that they were? <laughs> we, because, we, we tested, we, it we tested with the products with mom. Okay. We tested the products with mom. We have OBG, to, to our point, we had a lot of OBGYNs talk us through. We talked to a lot of midwives and doulas. And as a mom myself, there were a lot of products in there that I personally created and used on my own body. I'm still stuck on the price of okay. these boxes. Um, because I know a big part of, of this campaign is to make sure that we're touching underserved communities. Is everything in this box absolutely essential for, for, for every particular woman, or is there a downsizable version of these boxes that could be more refined and more specific to certain needs that could get you a lower price point? I'm just really stuck on that price point for communities of color to have full I access. Think, I totally understand. I think it's two parts for us. Definitely understand your question about the, the box price. The other component is that because we donate 4%, it essentially is a box for a box. When we give, when you purchase a box, you're essentially saying that a woman in Sub-Saharan Africa is also going to get a box, okay. and a woman in, who is displaced or is unhoused, uh, unhoused in, the US, in yes. the U.S. who is also pregnant is also going to get a box. So that 190 is the price, but you understand where the, the reach of that 190 goes is allowing us to also donate to these two different places. And is that explicit, like on the website? That's where explicit people order, throughout order our, from? yes. Yes. Well, thank you, thank ladies. You ladies. Thank you. So this much. is awesome. Thank you guys. Good, Good luck, luck to you. We have two more pitches left. One business for the readers and the other for the eaters. Stay put, Third Eye View and Tubby's Taste are next. Welcome back. Now we just heard from two women on a mission to support mothers with Fourth Phase Box. Our second pitch is another brand looking out for our community's health. Kristen Breckenridge of Third Eye View is with Danielle. Kristen. Hey girl. It's about that time. Are we ready to show the judges what we got? I am. I'm ready. I feel the confidence. Do you? Is it reeking? It's reeking <laughs> off of you. You don't need no push. You got this. I'm excited. I'm I very am. excited. You're looking godly and ready. Hey girl, look. Look, we love try. to see yeah. she clean. <laughs> well, go ahead and on through that tunnel, Kristen, and let them judges know what Third Eye View is up to. Thank you. Hi, Kristen. Hey. Hi. How are you doing? Hello, hello. Welcome to Third Eye View out of Houston, Texas. I'm Kristen, where fashion meets compassion. Check out our story. I am Kristen Breckenridge, owner of Third Eye View. We are based out of Houston, Texas. So we're a community-based eyewear company that offers affordable glasses, sunglasses, polarized lens. All of our frames are UV 400 that protects you from the sun. We've been blessed to be featured in some great publications. Like we were added to Beyonce's Black Business List. My inspiration for starting my business came from, I was working in corporate, and got laid off. And I started attending trade shows. People were like very receptive. They were buying them off my face. Then out of nowhere, my father was diagnosed with glaucoma. So watching him kind of navigate that diagnosis led me to be inspired to put more mission behind what I was doing. The gold trim and the bedazzled effect this gives, like Miami, Saint-Tropez, it takes you kind of on a mini vacation when you put them on. 
The core principles and values that our business is built on would be definitely community, quality, and definitely compassion. Our brand philosophy is small accessory, big impact, and I feel like we push those every day. I get joy from seeing like a smile on a client's face when they choose a pair of glasses that they did not think was gonna work for them. Like, it inspires me. It literally gives me fuel throughout the day to be like, I'm doing something meaningful in this world. So at Third Eye View, we offer affordable eyewear to, to, or frame to fit any face. But our focus goes way beyond just selling glasses. We do primarily two things. We have a sector where we team up with local nonprofits to provide affordable vision care, contact fittings, eyewear screenings, things of that nature to people who are either in underserved communities or don't have insurance to be able to access it properly. We also partner with larger organizations that share a social philosophy as us, the same social philosophy as us, and we create either pop-up shops or on-site events where we can present and educate those communities about the awareness and importance of vision care and how it affects our communities from a literacy level, from an economic level, and from a societal level. Kristen, you have a wonderful like aura about you. I do. It's yeah. a Houston you thing. Do. It might just be. <laughs> it might just be the it's Houston. It's because my yeah. is like that too. Y'all so angelic. I it's in the water. It's yes. in the water. <laughs> but like, it's it's real and it's so believable and it. it's so engaging. It's a beautiful thing. What's your team look like right now? My team is primarily one assistant, one sales rep, and everybody in my family. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. Can we touch the glasses? I'm yeah, feel it. Oh, yeah. I, no, I want to you guys to, to check it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like this. This design Y'all look cute. Okay. Okay. I love it. Okay. This design is amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So obviously the winner of this show gets a $200,000 cash infusion. How with that infusion and empowerment of your brand do you in turn empower your immediate community? Oh man. I, th when they asked me that before, I said, I just want to go home with a bankroll and do something yeah, good for my true. people. And I mean that, like I mean that it's it's a need. It's, it's like I recognize a problem and I just want to find a solution. What's the lowest and the highest retail of these glasses? Uh, lowest retail is $24.90 for the blue light frames and then the highest. The one I have right here, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, and they protect your eyes from the TV screens, the computer. Highest retail price is forty four ninety. Okay, mm. it is affordable. You didn't lie. Yeah, super affordable. Cause I, trust me, I've lost plenty of five, six hundred dollar pairs myself. So I know the the you know anguish that comes from jet skiing, and now it's in the Pacific Ocean, never to return. So that's what I kind of considered when doing it. Well, Kristen, I'm buying whatever you're selling. <laughs> and and to be honest, I want to be so real with you. Mm -hmm. It's not the product as to the reason why I like everything that you have going on is you, yep. right? Like I'm buying into you. So like if I had to choose, I would give you money because of how you show up in the world and how you represent yourself. And don't ever stop doing that because that is what's gonna make people stand in line to buy your product and it'll be in stores everywhere. I want these. Thank you, Kristen. This is they amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and we really taking these home. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much. I don't have and the mirror, time. but I just and feel like I look right. good in you know these. You know what I'm saying? I just like, I'm the man right here. No, you really look good. You know what I'm saying? I, no, I'm married, but I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kristen. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Well, tonight's last contestant is with our correspondent, Danielle. Let's check in now. You feel ready, calm. I am a little zen right now, yep. She's <laughs> confident in Tubby's taste, huh? Yes, our bold flavors, I'm hoping, are ready to wow the judges. I'm excited for you, sis. Get through this tunnel and let the judges know what's up with Tubby's taste. Thank you. Yes. Hi judges, my name is Danielle Tubbs and I'm the proud founder of Tubby's Taste. And here's my video. I'm Danielle Tubbs, I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and I'm founder of Tubby's Taste. Tubby's Taste makes boldly flavored, Jamaican-inspired, delicious, plant-based cookies. I thought this initially was just gonna be a hobby. Since starting my business in 2012, I've seen a lot of growth 
We have been featured on Good Morning America. We've recently gone from doing farmer's markets to grocery stores here in Chicago. I come from a long line of Jamaican cake ladies, so it's safe to say that baking is in my blood. My mom, aunt, and grandmother would make these traditional Jamaican cakes and sell them to people in the community. There may be some good days, there may be some bad days, but we stay resilient and we keep at it because what we have is something that people can't take away from us. I'm taking part of the tradition from the techniques and the flavors and putting my own spin on it. With Tubby's Taste, we want to bring brightness and delight to your life through our boldly flavored Jamaican-inspired cookies. Not only are our cookies soft-baked, but they're plant-based. Um, they're free of all allergens except coconut and wheat. So with Tubby's Taste, you can depend on bold flavors, unique ingredients, and nostalgia. We have sold 10,000 units, and we have baked over 100,000 cookies. I've brought in uh, three, just under $300,000 in revenue to date since we decided to go full-time with the business in 2018. And so we know that through um, our time in the Target Accelerator, we learned what it took to scale up and um, be ready for mass retail. And so we need the funds to be able to do that. So I hope that you can help me today by revitalizing and shaking up that stale cookie category through our boldly flavored Jamaican-inspired cookies, where you'll be allowed to enjoy and share in a homemade taste without the hassle. I mean, you're already pulling on at least two of my heartstrings, okay. being Jamaican, and you are already in Target takeoff. So, you already have me captivated. Of course, we'll taste the cookies momentarily, but I do have to ask you, how exactly are you getting the word out about your business right now? You mentioned Good Morning America and all of that, which is great, but what else are you doing? So we have an email list of a couple thousand people that we have grown organically through farmers markets, festivals, um, social media. And we've also, we, we actively post on social media, LinkedIn, things like that, as far as, um, Getting people to stay on our list and keep following us, honestly, once people try Tubby's Taste, they fall in love um, and they want to follow our journey as well. I'm hungry. Can we um, taste the cookie? Yes! <laughs> so I can show you better than I can tell you. So I have four flavors for you today. So kind of start from light to dark or choose your own adventure. So we have um, the lighter one that spreads the most is the cornmeal porridge flavor. Then we have mango, coconut, lime. Then the purple one is the Caribbean punch, which is grapefruit, pineapple, hibiscus. And then we have ginger molasses. They're all soft baked. And the purple one is more of a cookie dough texture. Okay. Oh, and all plant-based. Yes, 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 okay. yes. We're still listening, but this is I fantastic. <laughs> I, I, like, I, I'm not even like these, I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to get my undying. I'm these cookies girl, bussing, I'm, man. Right, right. <laughs> I, don't know I was not tell listening no more. This, this right like here? I'm like, wait a minute, this tastes oh like mango, God. and then I look, it's yep, got all, yep. it's, it's, um, this is, I need you to rank hard. them. Let me know what your, this what, one is what my is favorite. This, what, what is this joint right now? Oh, I haven't tried that That's one yet. That's the Caribbean punch. So you have, so there was no pastry school or anything like that. This all comes from cultural education. Yeah, I literally had the audacity. Ooh. Because I saw people who looked like me doing it. I woke up one day, um, I decided I wanted to learn how to bake from scratch looked up some recipes, started baking. I thought, because my family did it, everyone in my family can cook and bake, I thought everyone could do this. Then my roommate goes, girl, no, this is a talent. I burn things from a box. Right. And that was when I was like, oh, so this is like a thing. I wanna circle back to the, the talking about where you're at, because Bumby, I agree with what you're saying. You have a, a very wonderfully humble spirit in the way that you show up. And so me coming from a retail background, because you have this level of humility, which is, which is a truly good thing, I didn't expect you to be where you're at. Like I, I, I did not expect that you were in Mariano's, that you were doing some of those things. So make sure as you continue to craft your story, of course, dependent on the audience, mm -hmm. 
that you're able to hype yourself up a little bit to make sure folks know like, yeah, I'm humble, but I'm a humble brag too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Feel free to pop a collar. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. Yeah. I had to keep going back to it. The purple cookie is one of the best cookies. Oh, no, that's what I said. It's that's good. the best one. They all good. All right. They're all great. But that I'm, purple I'm cookie is I'm saving it for good. last. I don't, I don't, I'm going to eat that later. <laughs> all I need I is want to enjoy that. And I'm straight. To that point, you got to get these cookies in people's mouths. I do. Like, if there is one thing that comes to mind for me about, like, this product, you just got to get them to taste it because these are absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. Win, lose, or draw. I'd love to connect with you um, about possibly putting these in Slutty Vegan. They are delicious, hands down. Oh goodness, Thank there you, you. go. Wow, that. that would be a dream. You're already a winner. Yeah. Look at that. Thank already you so much. But thank you so much yeah. for being here. Thank we you. We appreciate you and good luck to you. Thank you. And leave the cookies. Yeah. <laughs> you can leave them all. I will. And there we have it. Three rising businesses betting on themselves. Our judges now hold a key to a big opportunity. Who will unlock it? Keep watching to find out. And now it's decision time. So judges, I need to know, are there any lingering questions that you wish were answered tonight? Bum B, what do you say? Oh, I think I've heard everything I needed to hear, saw everything I needed to see, and definitely got to taste everything I needed to taste. So I think it's pretty clear who my choices are. Um, for me, fourth phase, it's such a nourishing and necessary product that they have. Still though, there were some really, really big questions about their ability to execute, like even what's in the box, and as we all discussed, the price point of the box. Right, okay. So, <clears throat> being in business for the last five years, I realized how important it is to have proprietary products, right? When you own the IP, when it belongs to you, nobody can take it from you. Yes. Um, I really like Third Eye View, but I also recognize that her product is made in China. So somebody could also rebrand that same product and become her competition. Tubby's Taste is her recipe, so nobody can really like take it unless she gives it to somebody else. A differentiated product that cannot be easily replicated, like amazing. And the fact that she's even already on Good Morning America, like there's interest, she's on shows. There's, th yeah, there's like groundswell there already. And she just needs the funding to actually continue yeah. to move it forward and do the production and do all the necessary things to like keep it moving forward. You can see how she's going to explode yeah. once she has the capital that she needs to scale yes, it out. Yes, 100%. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's not about who needs this money the most because they all could use this money. But it's, to me, it's about who can get the most done mm -hmm. with this money. Well, why don't we go ahead and bring back all three of our contestants today and let them know who's taking home what. Let's do it. Let's do it. Welcome back. Hey, Hello. Hi. All right. Now for this episode, Melanie, will you please do us the honors of announcing our winning order tonight? I sure can. In third place, we have fourth phase. Fourth phase. Your concept is so needed in today's world. And we were so incredibly impressed by the level of intent you put behind the products themselves. However, we all kind of paused, of course, at the price point itself. And ultimately, it left us believing you all have a little bit more work to do around your go-to-market strategy and how you'll break down some of those price point barriers to make sure that all of those women who need your products can access them. Congratulations, fourth phase. That means that you'll be taking home $5,000. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. guys. Thank you. Let's go into our second place or runner up. Third Eye View. We chose you a second place here. Your eyewear is, first of all, stylish, but then also you have a cause that is so well tied to what you're doing in Houston. And we fell in love with that. And we fell in love with you as a founder. You are so compelling and so believable. We also pause, though, to recognize your eyewear is currently produced over in China and it lacks a, a level of proprietary information. And so it could potentially be replicated by others. So hopefully 
with $10,000 in your pocket walking away from this, you will be able to take that and continue to build your business. Congratulations, Congratulations. Third Eye View. You'll be getting $10,000. All right, ultimately, that leaves Tubby Taste in first place. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. We loved your product, if you could not tell. <laughs> in fact, I will probably go home and eat some more of those cookies. We love, love, love the product, but more importantly, we thoroughly appreciated what you've already built. You're already beginning your journey to scale. You just need these funds to continue to take your business to the next level. You know how you will invest it. And more importantly, during the next rounds, we'll get to hear even more about what you might do with $200,000. But today you're walking away with 20 grand. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Major congrats to you. And thank you to our judges. On the next episode, three more entrepreneurs make their pitches and get one step closer to 200K. The money pool is overflowing and we are jumping in. See y'all on the next episode of Bet on Black. Let's check in with one of our season two Bet on Black winners. I'm Dr. Alicia Gabriel. And I'm Deirdre Robinson. And, and we, we are the founders of The Lab Drawer. After the show, we launched a 23-week STEAM program for some local schools in Detroit. And this summer alone, we've had over three summer camps touching hundreds of students and impacting them, making sure they had access to STEAM education and knowing that there was no limits to their future. Thank you. Thank you. We gotta hustle hard, gotta hustle hard.